The second caliph of Islam Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu Umar ibn al-Khattab radiyallahu anhu Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa salatu wa salamu ala khatam al-nabiyyin amma ba'd fa'a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim Bismillahirrahmanirrahim الصلاة والسلام عليك يا رسول الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا حبيب الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا نبي الله وعلى آلك وأصحابك يا نور الله Dear viewers of Madani Channel, welcome once again in a new episode of our program The Second Caliph of Islam, Umar bin Khattab رضي الله عنه And at the moment, dear viewers, we're talking about the governance of Faruqi Azam رضي الله عنه The the rule and empire of Farooq Azam radiallahu and the caliphate of Farooq Azam radiallahu an. And today we'll talk about the Majlis Shura, the committee of consultation that Farooq Azam radiallahu an had established, and what we learn from it. How important it is for us to consult from one another regarding our matters, regarding our affairs. Inshallah, we'll talk about this today. But before that, let's listen to a virtue of sending peace and salutations upon the Noble Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam. The Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam has said that he who sends Salat upon me once, Allah Almighty Shavas, ten mercies upon him. And he who sends Salat upon me ten times, Allah Almighty Shavas, one hundred mercies upon him. And he who recites Salat upon me 100 times, Allah Almighty, inscribes between both his eyes that this person is free from hypocrisy and fire of hell and on the day of judgment will be kept among martyrs. Sallu ala al-Habib, sallallahu ala Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam. So dear viewers, we're talking about the committee of consultation that Baruqi Azam radiallahu anh had established in order to consult with in various matters. So remember dear viewers that we've been encouraged in the Quran and through the practice of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wa Alaihi Wasallam as well to consult one another regarding our affairs, regarding our matters. And when it came to the Prophet والسلام, when he consulted the companions Ali Maridwan regarding certain affairs, then it wasn't because he والسلام, was in need of consultation of anyone, but rather it was for our teaching, for our learning that how should we go about regarding certain matters, regarding those matters which are of importance. So dear viewers, the Holy Prophet ﷺ had also implemented the system of consultation which was then followed by the first Caliph of Islam, Sayyiduna Abu Bakr Siddiq as well. During the time of Siddiq Akbar an, this process of consultation also continued. And now when the time of Faruqi Azam an came, this process continued during this very era as well. And Faruqi Azam an, in fact expanded this system of consultation, this Majlis Shura, and it was established in such a sophisticated manner that example of this cannot be seen in the history. It is totally unprecedented the way Faruqi Azam an established this very system. And dear viewers, many a times the um, uh, rebelliousness, rebellion uh, approach of people, it also arises because of disputes and difference of opinions. But this is also something which was totally uprooted through this approach of Faruqi Azam an, and different layers of um, hierarchy in this um, system of consultation that he radiallahu anh, had implemented also. Inshallah, we will briefly go through uh, this system that Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, had uh, implemented during his era in our today's episode. Dear viewers, Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, was so strict in acting upon this um, consultative approach that even if it was for a smallest of the issues, he radiallahu an, would consult with this majlis shura and he wouldn't enforce his own opinion over others despite being the caliph of the time, despite being the uh, leader of the 
faithful especially dear viewers when a new matter would arise then Farooq Azam radiyallahu an would not make a decision about it until he would have consulted with elite companions with prominent companions those companions who held a high rank in knowledge and wisdom now dear viewers how much importance Farooq Azam radiyallahu an gave to this system this can be seen from the following saying of Farooq Azam radiyallahu an where he divides men into three types. So he says that men are of three types. The first type is of those that when any matter arises, then they resolve it with their own opinion. Then he says that the second type is of those men, of those people that they use consultation, they consult in difficult matters and they execute it, they resolve it in light of the consultation in light of the opinions of the people of knowledge and indeed these are the successful people and then he says that the third type of people are those whose destiny is failure and destruction why because neither does he seek the truth and nor does he follow the one who tells him the truth who tells him a good opinion who gives him a good opinion so this is how farooq azam radiyallahu an categorizes the types of people that one are those who resolve an issue with the, using their own opinion then there are those people who resolve an issue using um, the opinions of other people and Farooq Azam radiallahu an according to him these are the best type of people and then there are third type of people who have failure in their destiny who have destruction in their destiny and they are those who neither seek truth and nor do they obey those who tell them the truth who give them good opinion now dear viewers, there's another saying of Farooq Azam radiallahu an in which he says that out of my actions, those actions which are performed without consultation, there's no good in it. This also shows us that how much Farooq Azam radiallahu an gave importance to consultation. Another saying of Farooq Azam radiallahu an where he says that in your matters, consult with those people who fear Allah Almighty. Subhanallah. So he also set a standard for us that yes, we do need to consult people for our matters, but who do we need to consult? The people who fear Allah Almighty. Subhanallah. Dear viewers, another saying of Farooq Azam radiallahu an, which is full of wisdom and it shows us how important it is for us to consult multiple people in our sensitive issues. So he says that opinion of one person is like a weak thread. Opinion of two people is like two strong threads and opinion of three people is like an unbreakable rope. Subhanallah. How beautifully Farooq Azam radiallahu an has explained us the concept of consulting with multiple people, the more the better. And of course, when we talk about consulting with people, they should be those who are competent enough to consult regarding a certain matter. Of course, they need to be proficient in that very field regarding which the consultation or opinion is being sought. So the more the better. If we seek opinion of one person, we consult with only one person, then it is like a weak thread. Two people, their opinion, their consultation is like two strong threads. And three people, the consultation from three people, their opinion, it works like an unbreakable rope. So how beautifully Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, through this example showed us that how should we consult with multiple people and how should we take opinions from multiple people when it comes to executing a task. Now dear viewers, Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, had formed two majlis shura two committees of consultation um, and one most famous and prominent one which is also mentioned in the books is uh, normally that which he radiallahu an established at the time of his passing in order to choose a caliph after him. However, there was another majlis shura, another committee that he had formed right after he became the caliph. And this was the committee with, with which he radiallahu an would consult with regarding various matters. However, the clear difference between both these committees was that the latter committee which he formed the, the one that he formed at the time of his passing, people knew of it. People knew who the participants, who the members of that very committee were. And the other committee, the former one, the one he formed right after becoming the caliph, people, they were not 
aware of this very committee. They were not um, the members of this committee. The exact number of them was not known to people. Now, dear viewers, when we talk about the, the consultative committee of Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, it was very, very vast. And bringing the members into account is very difficult. However, we see the likes of Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu anh, the likes of Sayyidina Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, um, in, such, uh, in this committee. In fact, uh, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anh, uh, would be with Farooq Azam radiallahu anh during his travels and whilst he would not travel as well. So Farooq Azam radiallahu anh would keep Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu with him during his travels and during he would stay, he would not be traveling. Why? Because Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu was a prominent personality from the perspective of knowledge and wisdom and he radiallahu anh kept him with him for special consultation, for special opinions when it came to very sensitive matters. So, Sayyidina Abbas radiallahu anhu, Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu, Sayyidina Uthman bin Affan radiallahu anhu, Mawla Mushkil Kusha Ali al-Murtaza karram Allahu ta'ala wajhahu al-Kareem, Mu'adh bin Jabal radiallahu anhu, Ubay ibn Ka'ab radiallahu anhu, Zaid bin Thabit radiallahu anhu. These are a few names that are in the list of this special committee of consultation that Farooq Azam radiallahu anhu had formed. And if you look at it, all the members of this committee are those who are the people of knowledge, who have the knowledge of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and who are at the highest rank of knowledge and wisdom. Now dear viewers, Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, he had muhajireen and ansar both in his majlis, in his majlis say, shura. And at that, at that time, these were the two main groups of the Muslims, ansar and muhajireen. So it was very important for the members of both sides to be in his majlis say, shura. And this is also the wisdom of Farooq Azam radiallahu anh, that he had the members from both sides in his majlis say, shura. Now dear viewers, how the consultation would take place, there was no specific or formal way for it to be uh, established or for it to be taken place. However, if there was an important matter upon which con consultation was required, then a caller would call out, Salatu Jami'ah, meaning that people should gather for Salah. Then Farooq Azam radiallahu anh would lead to Raka'ah of uh, Salah, and then he would glorify Allah Almighty, he would praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where thereafter this consultation would begin. Now dear viewers, we come to know that the majlis shura which Farooq Azam radiallahu anh had built, the consultations that would take place uh, in them would be of two types. One would be of daily life matters. So for these matters, Farooq Azam radiallahu anh would take the consultation of the shura and he would implement them because these were not very uh, difficult issues. These were, these were not very complicated issues. For these ones, he would straight away implement the consultation, the suggestions, the opinions of the shura when it came to the daily life uh, chores, daily life matters. But then came the issues which were more of complex nature, which were more uh, delicate, which were more difficult. So for them, there would be long consultations, long uh, meetings that would go on regarding it. And then only after long consultations of it, um, a decision would be made regarding them. And then when we are talking about special issues, special complex based issues and very, very sensitive, delicate and difficult issues regarding them, Farooq Azam radiallahu anh would initially hold a consultation meeting with majlis shura and other people of knowledge, other wise people and those who would be representatives from amongst the, the public, they would also uh, attend and the, um, the points of majlis shura would be presented before them. This way, the, the, the opinions, the suggestions of Majlis Shura would also be present there. Now, other people of wisdom and representatives of public would also be there and everything would be brought before them. And their, um, and their consultations, their suggestions would also be brought forward. Now, 
every issue, every problem, um, all of its subtleties, all of its angles, perspectives, everything would be apparent before everyone and everyone would have consensus upon a decision in this way and this would not uh, leave any room for any doubt in the mind of anyone and this would uh, this would uproot any uh, possibility of dispute to arise as well so this is how faruq azam radiyallahu an would bring uh, bring forward any issue uh, depending on the uh, level of complexity of the issue this is how he radiyallahu an would resolve it and this is how beautifully any element of dispute that uh, would have a possibility of being risen, this would also be uprooted. Now, dear viewers, let's talk about some of the uh, incidents where Farooq Azam radiallahu an accepted the uh, consultation of his shura which he had formed at different occasions. So, dear viewers, Farooq Azam radiallahu an once intended to enter Sham, to go to Sham. However, the news of plague being spread in it had already spread and Farooq Azam radiallahu an and others they had come to know regarding this plague in Sham before entering Sham. Now there was a great consultation held regarding this issue that whether we should enter Sham or not. Now different elite companions, different members, the prominent members of the Shura, they gave different suggestions. However, the suggestions of not entering Sham was given precedence over other opinions and suggestions. And Farooq Azam radiallahu an did not enter Sham, did not go to Sham, listening and agreeing to the suggestions which were given by Majlis Shura. In Jamadul Ula 17 Hijri, Farooq Azam radiallahu an sought a consultation regarding visiting conquered areas. And in this regard, different companions they came up with different suggestions. When the people of Faris gathered together against the Muslims, then the people of Kufa sought permission from Farooq Azam to take action against them. However, Farooq Azam did not give them permission to do so. And then a consultation was held between Majlis Shura and all the Sahaba over this fact that whether I should go myself and take action against them or should the people of Kufa go and take action against them. So Majlis Shura and majority of the Sahaba Ali Muridwan, they, uh, their suggestion, their consultation was against Farooq Azam radiallahu an going himself and taking action. And they were more inclined towards giving permission to the people of Kufa to go and take action. Therefore, Farooq Azam radiallahu an accepted this very suggestion of Majlis Shura. So, Farooq Azam radiallahu an appointed a commander of the army and sent them for expedition against the people of Faris. So, even at this occasion, Farooq Azam radiallahu an gave precedence to the consultation of Majlis Shura over whatever his opinion was. Views. Farooq Azam radiallahu an had another Majlis Shura, another committee for consultation that comprised of only Muhajireen. And he radiallahu an would talk to them, would consult with them regarding daily life issues. And, and when it came to Zoroastrians, the fire worshippers, it was the very same Majlis with whom Farooq Azam radiallahu an consulted. So there was a separate place in Masjid Nabawi for Muhajireen where they would sit and Farooq Azam radiallahu an would also sit with them and discuss with them matters regarding different cities and areas. Daily life matters with them would be discussed with them. Dear viewers, when we talk about the members of Majlis Shura of Farooq Azam radiallahu an, then we come to know that there, there would be elite ulama in Qurra of the time. Thus, Sayyidina Abdullah bin Abbas radiallahu anhumah states that the members of Majlis Shura of Farooq Azam radiallahu an would be the people of knowledge, they would be ulama and they would also be young people as well as elderly people. So dear viewers, the word Qurra is also mentioned in this narration that Qurra and ulama would be in uh, this Majlis Shura. And remember, dear viewers, when the word Qurra is mentioned in this context, of course, we um, deem it as Qari, the reciter of the Quran. This is one definition of it. But when we talk Qurra, when we talk about Qurra in this context, it means 
Ahli ilm, the people of knowledge. Because people of knowledge would be referred to as Qurra at that time, meaning the biggest Qari. So the reciters of the Quran would also be greatest of the Qurra, those who would recite the Quran. And the viewers, the way of Faruq Azam radiallahu anh's um, execution of any um, any consultation, any opinion was such that first of all, he radiallahu anh would also take uh, suggestions and opinions of common people. Then he would bring that before the elite companions, Ridwan, the intellectual people, the wise people, and then he would also take their uh, suggestions and whatever they all would um, be united upon, whatever they all would um, be, all they all would agree upon, then that would be implemented. And when we talk about the vastness of the uh, committee of consultation of Faruq Azam radiallahu anhu, then this had spread far and wide. This was very, very big. It was very, very vast. And many young people were also included within this majlis shura of Faruq Azam radiallahu anhu, which mainly comprised of the people of knowledge, people of wisdom. And from within the youth, future leaders are groomed and they are prepared. This is where Faruq Azam radiallahu an had uh, a great insight where he radiallahu an would not limit any uh, suggestions or consultation or opinions depending on the age. He radiallahu an would uh, base it on the knowledge of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is not limited to age. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grants knowledge to whomsoever he wills. It could be a young person as well as an elderly person. So Faruq Adam radiallahu an, he would also have young people in his majlis shura and many other people who um, would possess wisdom, insight and knowledge of the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now dear viewers, the basic fundamental rules and regulations upon which Faruq Adam radiallahu an had formed majlis shura, it was none other than Quran and Hadith. So Faruq Azam radiallahu an would consult regarding those matters which were not openly or clearly mentioned in Quran and Hadith. If they're openly and clearly mentioned in Quran and Hadith, then of course there's no need of any consultation over them. One of the objective behaviors of these consultations would be that if any companion knows a specific Hadith regarding one matter, then that comes in the knowledge of him and others as well. Because some Sahaba at times would remember uh, some uh, Hadith while the other Sahaba would remember other Hadith and not the ones which the first group remembers. So this way, an issue would be resolved in light of all the known Hadith by the Sahaba at the time. Similarly, dear viewers, if any issue had different solutions in light of Quran and Hadith, then Sahaba Ikram Ali Muridwan, they could gather together and in light of their uh, light of knowledge, those issues could be resolved and the Ummah could agree upon one decision in the light of Quran and Hadith. So dear viewers, the establishing of committee of consultation, Majlis Shura by Faruq Azam radiallahu an, also reflects his intellectuality, his wisdom, and this is uh, a karama, a saintly miracle of Faruq Azam radiallahu an, because there are many wisdoms behind um, the way he established it. Now remember that Faruq Azam radiallahu an himself is mujtahid. He himself is the biggest of the scholars. He himself is the leader of those who possess wisdom. But Faruq Azam radiallahu established uh, Majlis Shura so that people uh, come to know about the system and this is also followed after him as well. Not only this dear viewers, Faruq Azam radiallahu and did so so that the Sunnah of the Prophet والسلام, is embedded, ingrained in the love of the Ummah. The love to follow the Sunnah is also ingrained in the hearts of the Muslims. Similarly dear viewers, Another beautiful wisdom that can be found in this is that Faruq Adam radiallahu and gave precedence to the elite companions first. Those who were muhajirin, uh, muhajirin al-awwalun, then those who were as-sabiqun al-awwalun and the badri sahaba. So depending on their ranks, depending on the ranks of the sahaba, Sayyidina Umar Faruq radiallahu and he gave them importance accordingly in this 
مجلس شورا سو دس واز آلسو سو دیٹ پیپل آلسو ڈیولپ سیم لو ان ریورنس ان دے ہارٹس فار دی صحابہ سو دس واز اگین اے ویری بیوٹیفل اسٹیپ آف فاروق اعظم رضی اللہ عنہ ٹو اسٹیبلش دا لو آف دی صحابہ ڈیپینڈنگ آن دیئر رینکس ان دا ہارٹس آف دا پیپل سو دیٹ دے آلسو ہولڈ دیم ریویئر دے آلسو آنر دیم ان دے ہارٹس آفٹر دا ٹائم آف فاروق اعظم رضی اللہ عنہ ایز ویل سملرلی دیئر ویئرس Another great wisdom behind this was to uproot any element of rebelliousness, any element of rebellion to arise. Sayyidina Farooq Azam radiallahu an uprooted this completely by forming Majlis Shura because many a times uh, rebelliousness, a, rebellion, uh, a rebellious approach arises when there's a dispute, when people think that their voice is not being heard. So Farooq Adam radiallahu and the way he established Majlis Shura, this element of rebelliousness was totally uprooted. Again, Farooq Adam radiallahu and made this beautiful system so that new people and future leaders could also be brought forward and they could also be given good responsibilities. And dear viewers, another wisdom that we see in this is that Farooq Azam radiallahu an made it apparent upon the disbelievers and polytheists that in Islam, every person, every layman has the right and approach to convey his opinion, his voice to the leader of the time, to the ruler of the time, if it is in the light of Quran and Hadith. Dear viewers, there are many other wisdoms that are also found in this beautiful and great system that Farooq Azam radiallahu an had implemented which are beyond our intellects and what Farooq Azam radiallahu an did by establishing this great system its example is not seen in the history of mankind it is totally unprecedented and how vast this circle is it is also unbelievable so dear viewers in today's episode we very briefly covered the topic of majlis shura that was formed by farooq azam radiyallahu an and how beautifully it operated may allah almighty shower his choices of mercies and blessings upon the second caliph of islam sayyidina umar bin khattab radiyallahu an and may allah almighty forgive us all without accountability for his sake amin bijahi khatam an nabiyyin sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam sallu ala al habib sallallahu ala muhammad صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم The second caliph of Islam Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله عنه Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي 